Lung gang, lung gang. If you are able to prove this trig identity on your own, I would classify you as some next level uh, mathematician. And if you're able to do it on your own after watching this, I would classify you as pretty advanced because you're gonna learn or learn how to use a lot of our double angle and addition rules in this problem, uh, which is very useful. So I recommend that you favorite this video, add it to a playlist as part of your trigonometry revision come exam time. So they want us to prove that this side is equivalent to this side. Now, the whole part about trig proofs is you always pick a side and make it look like the other, okay? Now, it's not always the case that you should start with the left side. Yeah, you could start with the right side and manipulate it to look like the left. Now, how do you decide which side is the best one to choose? On the left side, there's three separate terms. Here, there's one. So that's the first reason why I'll choose the left side, because it's easier to bring together more terms into one than it is to break up a single term into multiple. Now, the second reason is it's easier to break down larger angles into smaller ones, okay? So I'm gonna start with the left side, and I'm gonna break down the cos 5x into maybe cos 3x, and maybe angles x. Now remember, this here is normal mass, so we're not gonna be using De Moivre's theorem and all that stuff, only normal mass techniques. And if you are doing further mass, you can try and have a go at doing this, breaking this down using De Moivre's theorem, but I'd be careful because of this x and 3x combined De Moivre's theorem, breaks this down into single angles straight away, right? Using the binomial expansion. So I don't think even here, even if you do know the technique, I don't think it's very useful. So we're gonna rewrite cos of 5x as cos of 3x plus 2x. So we're gonna use the, un the addition rules. How do we remember the addition rules? I proved them in the last video. The addition rules for cos goes cos, cos, sine, sine. The way you remember it is couscous. So we have cos of 3x, cos of 2x. Cos changes the sine. Sine of 3x, sine 2x. Okay, at least we've got cos of 3x. Remember, we're still thinking about the fact that this is x, right? So maybe we need to change this cos 2x into a single angle, and we do that using the double angle IDs, okay? So cos of 2x has three different double angle IDs. The first one is the OG, cos squared minus sine squared. The other one is only in terms of cos, two cos squared x minus one. And the final one is in terms of sine only, which is one minus two sine squared. Obviously based on the answer, we should choose the one that is exclusively in terms of cos, okay? So this I'm gonna rewrite as two cos squared minus one, okay? And cos 3x, we'll just leave it because the answer is cos 3x. I guess the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is break down the sine 3x. Now, sine 3x, if you break it down all the way to a single angle, it will only be in terms of sine. So we're not gonna break it all the way down into the sine x's because we want it in terms of cos, right? So we're just gonna break this down in the same way that we broke cos 5x down. Okay, so we have cos of 3x, cos of 2x, which is two cos squared, x minus one, minus, now just for this sake, I'm gonna write the sine 2x first because I'm not gonna do any expansions on it. Then sine 3x, I'm gonna write as 2x plus x. I'm actually gonna expand this so we get two cos squared, x cos 3x, minus cos 3x. Now that's interesting because this is now in this form. So this we can just leave alone. This will decide what we want to do with it later. So we get minus sine 2x. Now sine, remember the expansion for sine goes sine cos, sine cos. So sine this, cos this. Sine keeps the sine the same. Sine cos. Okay. I guess we should start expanding our brickets. So we have two cos squared x, cos three x, minus cos three x, minus sine squared, 
2x cos x plus. I guess, uh, I mean, I'm going to write this in terms of its double angle expansion to combine with sine x. Should we write it first? Sec uh, we'll just write a second. I think naturally you would write it here. Cool. So that, sine squared. Now, what is the expansion for sine 2x? Now, the expansion for sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. Okay? So when we square it, when we square it, it's going to become 4 sine squared x cos squared x. So that's what that is. Then when we times by cos, this is going to become cos cubed. Okay? So 2 cos squared x cos 3x minus cos 3x minus 4 sine squared x. So remember, when we times these together, we get cos cubed x. Now remember, this is 2 sine cos, which when we times by sine is going to give me sine squared. So I'm going to get 2, so plus 2 sine squared x cos x. Okay? And then we're going to times by cos 2x, which I'll just write here. So we're thinking, okay, this is quite mad, isn't it? This, you could change that to 1 minus cos squared, but because this has sine squared, maybe things will simplify because really our only option for cos 2x is what we said before, which I, I wrote down here. Uh, I obviously remember it, but 2 cos squared minus 1. I just wanted a reference point. So maybe we should swap this out. So this is 2 cos squared minus 1. 2 cos squared x minus 1. Now, when we expand this, when we expand this, and actually, I'm noticing that this, I wrote plus, but that's actually minus. And this is minus. Okay, I was too hyper-focused on that sine 2x. When I expand this, it's actually going to give me the same form as this one. All right. So we have 2 cos squared x cos 3x minus cos 3x minus 4 sine squared x cos cubed x minus 2 times 2 gives me minus 4 sine squared cos cubed plus 2 sine squared cos x. Okay, so these two combine to make minus 8. All right. Mm, so I guess we just, I'm always debating, should I write it all again? I guess so, Mike. So you get minus 8. And even then, should we start converting it all in terms of cos? I think so. So these combine to make minus 8. I'm going to write cos cubed. Then sine is 1 minus cos squared. Okay. Then here we have plus 2 cos x. And then sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. All right, let's expand it. So we have 2 cos squared x cos 3x minus cos 3x. Be very careful, don't make my uh, negative mistake here. So we have minus 8 cos cubed x plus 8 cos to the 5x. Uh, yep. Plus 2 cos x minus 2 cos cubed x. Does anything simplify here? Yes. These two simplify. This becomes minus 10. Instead of writing a whole thing, I'm just going to change that to minus 10. And let's get rid of this. Anything else? No. All right, well, 
Remember, this was just cos 5x, okay? That was just this. Now we need to add these two terms in, okay? So, I was going to kind of separate this and say that this was cos of 5x. So, when we take cos x, add to cos 3x and the cos 5x, when we add cos x here, this is going to become 3. And when we add 2 cos 3x, this is actually just going to become cos 3x. All right. Now what? Again, I guess the only thing we can do, because we're not touching this, is we just deal with the cos 3x, right? So separately, let's just deal with um, cos 3x. Let's do it here. So cos 3x is 2x plus x, which remember cos is couscous, cos 2x, cos x, cos changes the sign, uh, sine x. Now the expansion for cos is going to be exclusively in terms of cos, so I'm going to change this into 1 minus cos squared, uh, sorry, 2 cos squared minus 1. It's going to write like this for ease times cos minus. Now this, remember, is 2 sine cos, okay? 2 sine cos, which when you times by sine becomes sine squared, which we can then change into 1 minus cos squared. So I'm going to write 2c, and then sine is 1 minus cos squared. Okay, so let's expand all this in. So we get 2 cos, I'll just write out now, 2 cos cubed, minus cos, minus 2, minus 2 cos x, plus 2 cos cubed x. So that simplifies, so let's write it down here, we have cos 3x, so we can use it as a reference, is 4 cos cubed, minus 3 cos x. All right, our triple angle IDs. We're using a lot here. I guess that can go in there. So we don't need the working for this anymore. But we need our reference point. So forget about all this for a second. So this, which actually, to be fair, let's uh, treat this as this and combine it with this. So we have 2 cos squared x cos 3x. Now this is this. When we combine it, what we got? We got minus 10 plus 4, which is minus 6, cos uh, cubed x. And we just have that. That doesn't simplify with anything. And these will cancel. Beautiful. Now, remember this. I want to combine it with another 2 cos squared. So maybe, because here, I'm thinking about factorizing. By the most we could factorize is a 2 and a cos cubed. But because I want cos squared, let's be smart about this. Let's factorize out cos squared instead. So we have 2 cos squared x cos 3x plus 2 cos squared. What would we be left with? I'm actually going to factorize out of this first because that's already positive. So we divide it by 2 is 4. Cos to the 5 divided by cos squared is cos cubed. Then here, minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3. Then cos cubed divided by cos squared is cos. Do you notice anything? Boom. That, what's inside the bracket, is cos 3x. So we're left with 2 cos squared x cos 3x plus, I don't even know why I rubbed it out, but we get this. And that will give us our final solution. And that is proved. Now, if you have any other suggestions, take a look at this. Absolutely beautiful working out. If you have any other suggestions at each individual stage, where might you have done something differently, let me know in the comments. Timestamp it so I can have a look at what you might have done differently. But the main thing is that we got there in the end. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe like the video for more content like this. And if you have any other suggestions, 
as to like what questions you might want me to do, let me know. You can even send me uh, questions on Instagram. Uh, just drop me a DM. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, like I said, whatever in it. <laughs> nice.